studies that have looked at the incidence of anastomotic leak, there have been 56 definitions noted in 97 different studies because when we think about a leak, we think about that uh, the patient becomes very, very sick and very ill, but it's also clear that there are much smaller leaks that are more difficult to diagnose with much less uh, in the way of consequences. So the incidence really depends on how you're going to define it, but generally I think it's fair to say in the 5% range. We define it uh, very broadly um, in terms of not only people who become very, very sick, but people who for example, become a little ill and uh, develop abscesses or infections after surgery, we presume all of those people have had at least, at least a microscopic leak. And I would divide that into the early leaks and the late leaks. The early leaks, which are the dramatic ones, virtually always need reoperation and depending um, on the condition of the patient and the location of the hookup, you can either um, do it again, um, or quite often, or most often in that circumstance or situation, the person needs an intestinal stoma or a colostomy or ileostomy on a temporary basis. The late leaks in which the patients are not ill and they just seem to simmer along in this day and age, most of them can be managed non-operatively with uh, intravenous antibiotics and x-ray guided uh, drainage.